Greetings my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today I'm here to make a recipe that is one of these kind of doppelganger recipes or rather than doppelganger, it's more of like faux foods, meaning the thing that it looks like isn't really the thing. It's kind of like three-dimensional trompe l'oeil, edible trompe l'oeil. <laughs> And I saw this because I was researching some other recipe and stumbled upon this. I believe I was looking up fried chicken and somehow I ended up finding this. And this was popular a few years ago. It comes from Charleston, South Carolina. And the chef that created this is Cynthia Wong. Now it is fried chicken ice cream. It does not contain any fried chicken in it whatsoever. It just looks like a piece of fried chicken. But in reality, it's ice cream. It's breaded, it looks exactly like ice cream, but when you bite into it, you discover that it has ice cream on the inside and a little chocolate cookie in the middle. She has it presented in a bucket, a bucket of chicken, and I saw this, I said, I have to see if I can try to make this because I'm nowhere near South Carolina. So imagine my surprise when I was researching this, I found an actual recipe that Cynthia shared with the Today Show on how to make the not fried fried chicken ice cream. Now, when you look at the recipe list, this looks like a totally feasible recipe. You're like, oh, that's possible. I can do that. I can do that. Just need by this, by this, by this. No, no, no. There is a reason why Cynthia charges $30 for six pieces of this fried chicken because it is very labor intensive and requires a lot of work. So here I am to do that for you today. <laughs> and if you wanna make this for yourself, I will include the original recipe link down below. So the first thing we need to do is make the ice cream base. Now this ice cream base is unique because it's gonna be made of waffle cones. So this kind of play on chicken and waffles. So you're gonna get your hands on some waffle cones and then you're gonna place them into a bag. I found six or so was enough for this recipe. And then use a rolling pin and crush them up until you have little bits of cone. So in our saucepan, we're gonna have two cups of milk, a half a cup of cream, and two cups of sugar. It's a lot of sugar. Mix this all together. We want all the sugar to get dissolved. And then we're gonna bring this to a boil. And then we're gonna add our waffle bits. Now be careful, there's lots of milk in here and milk loves to boil over, so keep your eye on this. You want all the waffle pieces to absorb the milk. You want them to be nice and soft. So once they get soft, after a couple of minutes, you're gonna take an immersion blender. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can pour this into a blender. And you're gonna blend this up to make sure that all the waffle pieces are nice and homogeneously ground into the milk. So after we've ground everything up, we're gonna to continue to cook this until it is thickened, the recipe says. This is the word that always gets me, thickened. Oftentimes recipes don't say how thick, like thick as gravy, thick as pudding, thick as shaving cream, thick as what? So when I made my vinegar pie recipe, it said thickened and I did not cook it long enough. And so my, okay, I'm having flashbacks here. Let's, let's pull it back. So I cooked this until it was a little bit thicker than gravy. I figured that's thickened, right? So now you're gonna cool this down, put it in a bath of ice water and then place it in your refrigerator and allow it to chill overnight. So the next day, this is the consistency of my ice cream base. It's very odd. It's set up like a jello. It's very gelatinous, very solid, very scoopable, and just strange. So I thought, okay, it says to churn it. So <laughs> I put half of it into my ice cream churner because I got quite a lot of it and proceeded to churn as I usually would. So the recipe states, place into silicone mold. No. But I did find some drumstick molds. I found a chocolate mold. I'll put the link down below to where I found that. So a silicone mold, you can just mold the entire drumstick and pop the whole thing out. The mold that I ended up using was a chocolate mold. It only has one half. So you're gonna have to do this twice, put the two pieces together. Because my mold is made for chocolate and I wasn't sure how the ice cream would unmold out of it, I decided to line it with a layer of saran wrap and that way I could just pull it out. Then you're gonna scoop in your ice cream base that you just churned 
And then you're gonna press in one of these. And this is a Cadbury Finger. I was not familiar with this cookie before, but it is a British cookie apparently. And they're very cute. They're just little sticks of biscuit or cookie that are dipped in milk chocolate. And this is supposed to be like the cookie bone inside of our <laughs> drumstick. The recipe actually calls for using pretzels, but after reading articles about the original fried chicken ice cream, it says they use these. So this sounds better than a pretzel anyways. Although pretzel probably would still be good. Nice crunch, a little bit of salt, but I'll take chocolate biscuit over pretzel any day. So press the cookies into the ice cream and then place the whole thing into the freezer, allow it to freeze for at least a couple hours. And then you can take the saran wrap and pull the ice cream drumsticks out because you only have half now. Then you're going to take the tray, do the same thing, put some saran wrap, fill it in with the freshly churned ice cream, and then take your frozen ones and flip them right on top. And that way the two halves can become one because half of it is frozen and half of it's in frozen base. So it's like soft, frozen, and meld together. And we've got ourselves a three-dimensional drumstick. Place the whole thing back into the freezer, allow it to chill overnight, at least a couple hours so we have a nice solid drumstick. So with the chilling time, I was hoping that the ice cream would solidify and get nice and firm, but it didn't. It did not get firm. It was still kind of squishy and sticky and just not frozen ice cream. You know when you freeze ice cream, it gets rock hard, you can't scoop it, it is so solid. I need it to be that solid because we're gonna be coating this with a chocolate coating and so it needs to be substantial and so this is not gonna work. So I decided to try something else <laughs> and I found this Speculoos butter ice cream from Trader Joe's and I said that's gonna be perfect. We have cookies, we have ice cream and we have the solid ice cream state that I need so I can dip these drumsticks. So. I repeated the same process. So now the drumstick ice cream center part are done. We continue with the recipe and it's like, oh, lovely. We just need caramelized white chocolate. Caramelized white chocolate. You have to make caramelized white chocolate. Oh, lovely. And of course there's no instructions on how to make caramelized white chocolate, but thankfully it's not too difficult to make. I'm using David Lebowitz's recipe. I'll put a link down below to the original recipe and it's pretty simple. So it is really important to use high quality white chocolate in this case because it will not caramelize properly if you don't have enough cocoa butter. Empty the entire bag onto a rimmed baking sheet and then you're gonna place it into a relatively cool oven about 200 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So after 10 minutes you're gonna take the tray out and at this point the chocolate should be nice and soft and you're gonna use a spatula, a clean and dry one, and start to smear it all out. So we're gonna do this process continually for the next half hour, hour. Every 10 minutes take the tray out, stir and scrape the chocolate. It's gonna to start to caramelize. It's gonna start turning of a darker brown, but you must be careful. You don't want to burn this. Spread it out onto a piece of parchment, nice and thinly, and just allowed it to cool. Once it was completely cool, I just snapped it up into little pieces, and then I placed it back in the bag that I originally got the chocolate in. Alrighty, so that brings us to our final stage, which is to coat the ice cream drumsticks with our crispy coating. So I've got a little bit of boiling water here, and I'm gonna take a Pyrex glass bowl and place it right on top. One cup of our caramelized white chocolate, a half cup of coconut oil. Now this is the purified coconut oil, so it has very little of the coconut smell in there. Continue to do this until the chocolate and all of the coconut oil are completely melted. So if you follow my in stories at all, you know that I'm often up late concocting things in preparation for shooting the next day. And I have to use a lot of willpower when your entire kitchen smells like chocolate and vanilla. And just like, yeah, I say, no child. No, do not, do not. You're going to bed in 45 minutes. Do not, do not. Beautiful. So I've got a zippy bag here with about two cups of just plain old cornflake cereal. And we're just gonna crush these up. Here we go. Now we're ready to coat. Let me go grab the frozen drumsticks. Be right back. No, 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 you come here. Yes, you come to mama. These were made with the store-bought ice cream. They are firm, they're rock hard. 
Now these were made with a homemade waffle base. They're misshapen and they're soft. If you push on them, they're soft. Not good. Let's use these ones. This is so funny. <laughs> it's an ice cream drumstick. How ridiculous. Dunk this into here and then into our crumbs. Oh my god! It's totally working! Oh my gosh! <laughs> that is amazing! Look, it looks like a piece of fried chicken. Yes! Look, 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 look! <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna put that on a plate before I mess it up and then place that back into the freezer. Ah, oh, I'm so happy about that. That's beautiful. Beautiful! Okay, let's do this and quickly dunk it. Oh my gosh. And then quickly into the crumbs. <laughs> oh, this is turning out so awesome! <sighs> I'm working a little bit manically, even more so than usual, because this is ice cream and I don't want this, these drumsticks to melt too quickly. So again, gonna dunk. So what's cool is because I'm working with frozen pieces of ice cream here, the coating sets up really quickly and actually doesn't melt the ice cream much at all. Oh my gosh, this looks so beautiful. Now we're gonna place these back into the freezer and allow them to set up completely before we taste them. I'm so excited. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna wash my hands. No salmonella here. <laughs> Alrighty, I am back. My drumsticks have been chilling in the freezer and they're completely hard and I can't wait to taste these. But before I do that, I have to do one last thing and that is place these little chickens into a bucket. Dun, 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 dun. I've crafted my own chicken ice cream bucket. So we shall put these in here. And there you have it. Fried chicken ice cream that contains no actual fried chicken. Just looks a lot like fried chicken. It's probably the longest title of any food thing I've ever made, but there you have it. Yeah, I'm so happy. <laughs> Itadakimasu. Mmm. It's such a strange experience though, because this does look like deep fried fried chicken, but when you bite into it, it's a complete dessert. It's familiar because it's ice cream. It's got this really great crunch on the outside, corn flaky, and that coating is really nice. The caramelized white chocolate along with the coconut. It's thin and has a little bit of a bite to it, and the flavor is really nice too. Slightly caramelized, but very familiar white chocolate flavor. That ice cream is really good. I recommend it. If you like speculoos, cookies, which come from the Netherlands. They have a nice kind of cinnamony, slightly nutmeggy flavor to it. Little bits of cookie in there and a little bit of kind of caramel flavors as well. So I didn't get to the cookie bone yet, so I'm gonna give us another bite. Found it. <laughs> Incredible, love it. You get a nice crunchy biscuit bite in there, a little bit of chocolate in there. This is absolutely Wonderful, delightful, playful, arduous to make, but definitely worth the effort. If you want to really impress people and do this kind of whole trompe l'oeil thing, I recommend it. But I don't recommend going to the lengths of making the waffle cone ice cream. It didn't work out for me. Just save yourself a lot of time. Get yourself an ice cream that you like. So you will have to find yourself a drumstick mold and you will have to make the caramelized white chocolate. But in the end, a very, very satisfying dessert. Ah, I'm gonna have another bite. Because I was curious, I also coated one of the failure drumsticks, one of the ones that were made with the waffle cone ice cream base. So let's give this one a taste. Here we go. Hmm. 
the ice cream base is way too sweet. And I think maybe that has something to do with the waffle cones I bought. I use store-bought waffle cones and maybe at Cynthia's bakery she uses homemade waffle cones because this is way too sweet. The ice cream base has also got a very strange texture. It's kind of stretchy and it's just way too sweet. I do like the flavor though. It has a very distinctive waffle cone flavor. It reminds me of an ice cream store, but it's just too sweet and the texture is strange. And my biggest concern was that it would be too soft to batter up, but surprisingly it was fine. It wasn't too difficult to batter up at all. Alrighty, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. For the end, I'm gonna go like...